Hey everyone, Andrew Prober here with Great Expectations Realty. So we're going to answer some of your questions today about real estate and me and the company and all of that. But before we go ahead and get into those things, let's go ahead and have you hit that subscribe button um, and tap that bell so that you can be notified when ever I release really great new videos, um, just like this one on everything that's related to real estate and uh, living in Central Florida and Ocala and Denellen and all of those um, areas and what it's like here. So um, as much as I love making these videos, and I really do love making them, um, I want to help you even more with your real estate related needs here in Central Florida. So remember, I am a realtor that does YouTube videos, not a YouTuber that also does real estate. So if you want to contact me about any of your real estate related questions or needs, go ahead and contact me, text, call, email, whatever, in any of the contact info below. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in. No. Actually, I mean, who grows up wanting to be a salesperson? Um, actually, I wanted to be a missionary. I'd actually trained for it and really wanted to do that with my life. Um, things didn't work out that way so far. Uh, there's always time. Um, but that's what I really wanted to do and be when I was growing up. Um, I was, I actually don't remember a time I wasn't working, if that makes sense. Um, I've always been a worker. Um, but I think my first actual job was when I was 11, I was helping this older couple. Um, they had a night job where they were going in and cleaning offices and they needed somebody to come in and like just clean the baseboards. Um, so I got $30 and a Wendy's Frosty. For going and helping them um, along with my older brother um, he got to do some of the other you know heavier lifting things because he's a couple years older than me um, but that was my first technical job um, I did a lot of house cleaning stuff after that I've actually done a lot of different things um, but real estate is definitely where my true heart ended up ah by far that was my grandmother um, my grandmother passed away a few years ago, um, but her and I had gotten really, really close and, um, she had been a real estate broker down in Fort Myers, Florida for many years and she absolutely loved it. Um, and her personality and mine, uh, were not exactly identical, but we were very similar and, um, she saw that I had actually done really, really well with, um, uh, with sales prior to that. That's just what I always end up as either management or sales. Um, so she actually encouraged me strongly and somewhat forcefully to get into real estate. Um, I was really intimidated by the idea. I didn't know anything about houses. I thought I needed to, um, you know, have years of college, which probably would help, but, um, <laughs> I, I did, I was just really intimidated. You know, that's, that's just a those people that drive those really expensive cars and they look just so and so pristine and I'm not that person. I don't know anything about houses, grandma. I know, you know, they have like windows and doors, right? I mean, a roof, what, what's there to know? I mean, I, it was just so intimidating. Um, so I actually didn't think I could do it. Um, but she was pushing me, pushing me, pushing me, telling me that it was a really great field for me and that I was going to love it. And of course she was right. Um, she never got to see me open, uh, my brokerage, but she did see me, uh, do real estate for many years. And there was many times that I called her, um, after a long day and told her crazy stuff and crazy stories, uh, that had happened that day. And she got to, uh, to enjoy that. So, um, she had a, a retirement while living vicariously through me, I guess. So we both kind of enjoyed that. Me, I got to, you know, tell her all about the crazy and kind of unwind and vent and she got to kind of live off of that. So um, it worked really well for us. I don't actually think that I could do a nine to five job anymore. I'm not really sure. Um, but I, uh, I'm my own boss. I, you know, I'm the one that decides what I'm going to do and when. And, um, I, I, I love that. I absolutely love being in charge of myself. Um, nobody is going to be harder on me than I am. So that's the kind of personality you have to have with that, uh, with this profession. 
Uh, if you are not a go-getter, if you are just, you know, happy to be sitting at home watching TV or something, real estate is not going to work for you. It really isn't because you have to go out there on the days you don't really feel like it and you have to go out there and work and you have to go out there and work with people that you're maybe not really getting along with or clashing with or whatever and you still have to make the effort. You still have to push through. Uh, so that, that's, you know, that can be difficult and it can be great. Um, but nine to five, I just don't think I could do that. I mean, I just, I don't know. I, it would be really, really hard to go back to that. I definitely had those jobs in the past and I was great at those jobs in the past, but I just, I don't think I could do, do that now. So, I don't know. <laughs> I absolutely love new construction in that it's, you know, it's less risk and it's perfect for certain people and certain families and certain circumstance. Um, absolutely, you know, love that. Love how beautiful they are and how, you know, it's got a warranty on it and, you know, how much easier those transactions are for me as a realtor. Um, so, yeah, in that, I, I really love it. You know exactly what you're going to get most of the time with those. Uh, for me, though, personally, I absolutely love taking an, uh, an old beaten up house um, that just really, you know, is just, it, it, it's cosmetic issues primarily and just needs some love and um, going in and just giving it a facelift and it's just so much joy to see something that was so ugly turned into something so beautiful that people want. That, to me, is really, really enjoyable. So for me personally, for my own circumstances, I love um, rehabs and I um, especially love the older homes and stuff. And I say older homes, um, I don't mean historic homes. I've never done a rehab in any way, shape or form on a historic home. And I don't think I would want to. I love watching it when other people do that. But I know how many problems there are with like wiring and plumbing and getting it to code and um, mess with the historic society, historical societies and stuff. And it's just, there's so much with those historical homes that I just, I don't think I would want to take it on because it's not just turning something old into something beautiful. It's also to make sure that the bones are actually sound and that it's a safe place to live. So for me personally, I don't go that old, but I do love, you know, you know, maybe like 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, and turning that into something pretty, even, even actually, you know, houses that are like 2004, 2007, um, a lot of those have gotten beat up pretty bad. So sometimes they need a little help too. They've, they've been abused. <laughs> so that's actually one of my joys is, is to, um, turn something ugly into something beautiful and feel real pride in my work. So Again, that's going into uh, the person and their circumstances and um, risk, really. Uh, so, I mean, it's just like kind of, you know, kind of like stocks and bonds and stuff like that. Some people are able to do riskier investments based on their circumstances and their desires and what they want to get out of it. Of course, you're going to get um, more return on investment when you take more risk, but some people are just not comfortable with that and you need to know what their needs and their wants are. So for me personally... Um, I do enjoy um, handyman specials, what they're called, but not everybody is uh, going to be good with that. And you want the customer to be happy with the end result and the whole process. Uh, so it's not necessarily for everyone. Um, so would I recommend it? Yes, absolutely. To everybody? No, absolutely not. Uh, okay, so my favorite realtor store, well, there are so many uh, that it's actually really, really hard um, to even think about which one would be my favorite. Um, it's actually probably my husband's stories. I get such a charge out because he's such a, I don't know, he's very German, very, you know, kind of straight laced and, you know, which is great. That's cool. Um, I'm a little German too. I can actually, you know, I can understand whatever, but I'm a lot more laid back than he is. Um, and he, for some reason, always ends up in the oddest, weirdest things. Maybe I'm in the same kind of circumstances, but I just don't really see it 
as much or feel it as much as he does. Um, so yeah, one time I'm going to tell his story. Um, so one time he was showing a house to an elderly couple and he walked in and apparently, uh, the person that was selling the house was a dominatrix and, um, she had like, you know, stuff uh, she was actually filming right in the living room. And so she had all of the paraphernalia up on the walls that were painted red and, um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, interesting. Um, my husband was <laughs> like six shades of red himself, uh, and the elderly couple he was mortified for, um, he was very upset with the listing agent because she did not actually say anything about this. I mean, we have a place in MLS where we can easily put realtor only remarks. So it's not out to the general public. It's just kind of notes to ourselves, nothing in there. Okay. So he had no heads up whatsoever. He just walked into a porn studio, basically. I mean, you know, that's basically what it was. So, um, he was upset. He definitely had words with the listing agent um, later, uh, because he thought that she could have handled it differently. And also if he had had small children with him, um, it wouldn't have been appropriate at all. So, you know, everybody has their own lifestyle to live and everything, but we're walking through their living rooms. And so their lifestyle becomes our showpiece as well. And so, yeah, so that was, that was hilarious that I laugh every time I think about it because I know what he's like and that it's, it's great. So I love that. That one was good. Um, for me personally, um, I've gotten chased down a hallway by a naked man just out of the shower and his dog, um, and threatened to get shot that time. Um, and I mean, at the time it was terrifying cause I ha I was going down a dark hallway and there was, you know, the people behind me, I was showing the house to, and then he's coming at me. So I couldn't back up cause I was like on them. Um, and yeah, so apparently what it was is the listing agent, um, had not gotten a hold of him to let him know that there was a showing and she thought he was out of town. There was just some kind of miscommunication. So I got the lockbox code from her and um, yeah, he was in the shower. He thought there was somebody breaking into his house. So he was coming at me with this German shepherd. Like I was like, you know, breaking into his house and there's me and a couple other people and he's just, you know, yelling and I'm, I'm seeing everything. And it was just, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was really, really, really funny later at the time. Not so much. I was like really scared. Um, but that one was pretty good later. I mean, <laughs> really? <laughs> um, I think he would be more scary with clothes on, but I don't know. I'm not sure. I was just, it was, <laughs> it's bizarre. Um, but a lot of my stories have to do with wildlife. There's so much wildlife stories um, here that it's just, it's hilarious. I have bat stories, bee stories, lots of bee stories, um, an alligator, snakes, lots of bugs. Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, lots of stuff like that. So, ah, oh, there's where we go into the, um, many, many wildlife stories. Uh, at one point I did have a, it's not my favorite story, but I did have a tenant call me up and tell me that there was an alligator in the road and she wanted me to do something about it. And she lived right across from like a big pond or something. So I'm like, I don't do alligator. <laughs> I'm, I'm a realtor. <laughs> I didn't know what she really wanted me to do about that. I'm like, call fish and wildlife or something. I, I don't do wildlife. I don't do get, I mean, I'm not going to go out there and wrestle it for you. I'm going you know, to put a leash on it and take it back to the pond. I have no idea. So <laughs> eat it. <laughs> I have no idea. So yeah, that one was kind of one of those moments. Like my license didn't, they didn't talk about this. Um, when I went through licensing, <laughs> it was for my real estate license. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, my favorite story was actually when a tenant called and she did, uh, she said that she had been cleaning the day before and she had all the windows and the doors open doing some spring cleaning. And you know, it was really nice outside. So she had the windows and doors open, which in Florida is always a bad idea because what's outside could come in. And that's what happened. Uh, apparently at like six o'clock the next morning, she went in to use the bathroom 
and there was a very upset squirrel doing laps in the toilet bowl. So apparently at some point during the day before, the squirrel had come in and uh, had actually went to, got trapped in the house somehow and um, had went to go and get a drink out of the toilet and fell in and then was stuck there. So poor thing. So, I mean, I'm feeling bad. So I'm like, well, you know, get it out. And she, <laughs> I would have done it in my house. Um, but she's like, no, she goes, I mean, it's like really upset. I'm scared it's going to bite me. And I'm like, okay. So, you know, I did end up sending a pest control company down there because I didn't want it to be a, a safety issue. Uh, but yeah, I was, it was just kind of like, well, it's, I mean, when exactly did you find out that the squirrel was in the toilet bowl? So yeah, kind of, <laughs> but I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> the questions that people ask me to take care of and the things that they ask me to do um, as a property manager far outweigh the stuff that they ask me to do as a realtor. Um, but at the same time, I have absolutely no idea what to do with a squirrel, a very angry and upset, tired squirrel in a toilet bowl. I mean, what would you do? Tell me in the comments below, because if you could have handled it better, I would love to find out. I don't know. I just do things as I can see that makes sense. But so, um, so yeah, we actually do have a fully family business. Uh, we figure our kids will probably uh, join us in real estate at some point. Uh, my husband and I have been working together. He actually got licensed about the same time as I did. And then of course we got married and obviously it would make sense for both of us to be at the same brokerage. <laughs> so we started working together um, pretty much as soon as we got married. And then when we opened the brokerage, of course, you know, we uh, were doing that. Um, and uh, it's, it's good in some ways. Uh, it took me a few years to uh, get used to being married because I'm fairly independent and uh, my husband is such a polar opposite personality to me um, and then not having you know when you go you're working and your husband is working and you're separated during the day and then you come back together at night and you talk about your day you're not together that much because you know, it's hours and hours of separation and hours and hours of sleep. So really how many hours you're together during the week is minimal. I am with my husband a lot, like a lot. Like I probably am with my husband more than other people are with their husbands. Like I would say four or five times as much. So, <laughs> so there is no break. <laughs> there's no, there's no getting away. You can't go to work and not him not be there. You can't you know, go home and him not be, it's, we're always together, you know, <laughs> so that takes some getting used to. And also, um, learning to, as that independent female that I am learning to, um, value his input and value, um, what he brings to the table because he has a lot more experience, um, than I do in things. And, um, uh, his way of approaching things is oftentimes better than mine. Um, so everybody thinks I'm the people person. He's actually more of a people person than I am. Um, uh, he's just kind of quiet at first. And then once he starts rolling, then there's no shutting him up. So, but he won't do videos. I don't know. I, 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 he's done like one. So, so yeah, he's not a huge fan of, uh, of doing videos himself, but he's always pushing me to do it. So I guess there's, you know, that kind of encouragement. So, um, and then, uh, working with my sister is great. I absolutely, um, love working with her. She's the perfect personality, um, to have around. She's just so, so steady, so in control. And, um, I think again, having that balance and that those different kinds of personalities for different things is, is phenomenal. Um, once you understand <laughs> that you have to, um, you know, consider what they're saying and appreciate what they're saying and where they're coming from, um, Bible says in the abundance of counsel, there is wisdom. And so having multiple people, um, provide counsel and provide, um, you know, their experience is helpful. So I'm always looking for that. Uh, these are questions a friend of mine actually came up with. So the oddest thing that I've had, okay. 
I have, it's probably the bees. That is um, one of the things I actually went to show a house to this friend, actually, that came up with these questions. That's probably why she came up with them. Um, but she actually, I went to show her how she was a buyer from years ago, and um, I went to show her a house, and there was like a kind of, I don't know, humming, I guess, coming from the house, and couldn't quite figure out uh, what was going on, because was, it was a foreclosure, there was no electricity on or anything, so I'm just like, what is that humming? It was just very steady humming. And um, what had happened was a huge amount of bees, I don't know how many because I didn't check, um, but a huge swarm of bees had gotten up into the attic and decided to turn the house into their own personal beehive. And what was happening is as I, I went and I was just kind of like, something's not quite right here, but I couldn't tell what it was. So I went outside at one point and I'm looking up to kind of identify what the humming was. And that's when I saw all of the wax and honeycomb were slowly coming down out of the soffits. And that's when I realized there wasn't just like a couple of bees in there. There was actually like millions of bees in there. And if at any point, um, and they probably could come through the house, it would be a huge swarm of bees with people trapped in the house. So I ran in and grabbed them real quick. And I'm like, get out of the house, get out of the house. No, no, you've probably got like, you know, gallons and tubs of honey sitting in your attic space. You do not want this house. No, this is not safe at all. Because even with taking the, the bees out, I mean, what kind of damage was done up in the attic space? So yeah, no, <laughs> just no. It was a very sweet home. Home sweet home was accurate for that. Um, but yeah, I was very worried that it wasn't safe to walk around on the inside of the house because the bees could have been upset that somebody was in the middle of their hive uh, or below their hive and attacked. And that would have been disastrous, especially if they were allergic to bees, which I didn't know. So uh, that was kind of crazy. Um, actual building the house itself, um, I actually saw an exterior door in a bathroom like in not in the bathroom but actually in the shower so like there's the sink you walk in there's the sink there's the toilet and there's like a bathroom like an actual like a bathtub shower thing and you have to walk through the bathtub and there was a sliding glass door and that's how you got out to the pool <laughs> I was just like who thought this was a good idea? I mean, it wasn't like you could just walk through. It wasn't like flat. You had to like step into the shower and then step out of the shower to get outside. And I'm going, what? <laughs> what? Next time, just do an outdoor shower. If you really want to shower off after or before a pool or whatever, just do an outside shower. They're not that complicated. Um, but to actually have the outside in the shower was bizarre. It was the strangest thing. I, I really wish um, that I had taken pictures because some of the stuff that I've seen, I really wish I could share that at this point. The pictures of the stuff that's a little odd or strange or just not going to work uh, or beyond the norm, those are not the pictures that normally get it up to MLS. It's We have to take those pictures individually when we're actually out at the houses. So you probably don't see some of the crazy stuff we see. But yeah, that was probably my craziest one. Anyway. All right. Well, just as a reminder, if you could just go ahead and click that subscribe button, I am trying very hard to get it to a thousand subscribers. So if you can help me out, that'd be much appreciated. Y'all have a great day and thanks for watching. Thank you.